Hi everyone, it's Cindy. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today starting another new journal and also um, I think I'm going to use my September Patreon journal together kit in this journal um, so that I can show it to you as well. So that being said, let's get started. So um, I have just looking at what these things are. Oh, these are kitty kid handprints that I gotta put in my my personal journal. So I will set those aside over here. So this is the book that we're going to get into next. This is an account of Saint Ostel by Canon Hammond, a Cornish parish. Um, so I love this old book. It's really like, you know, just a nice book. And um, the paper, look at these end papers inside. Aren't they just beautiful? They're, they're very delicate. So I may see what I can do with those, but the paper itself is just incredibly delicate. Um, it's very soft paper. It's like that really shiny, or like not shiny, but like that um, <clears throat> smooth, like very, very smooth and very, very thin kind of paper. So I think it probably would crack if I were to bend it. It's got some onion skin here. The book itself is from 1897. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of interesting stuff in it, but let's do the fold, the test here and see if like, well, actually if the paper is quality, it's not gonna crack, so that's good. Um, it has those nice jag jaggedy edges. And I'm just going to kind of do a quick flip through. So it seems like it has some black and white pictures within it, but I don't really think it's got anything all that interesting, except maybe that one diagram that I just saw, but that's okay. We don't need to find it right now. It's mostly just about, I think, churches and such. There's a map in there, which we could use. So I think what I'll do is just kind of get started and remove it from its cover here. And there we go, it is out. <clears throat> so I will keep this around because I do like to put these back inside the cover when I'm not using it. But first we need to clean this up here. So first I will pull this away. That could be good for collage. Maybe I'll save it actually for this book because it has the connected end paper. So let me just dump this in the recycle bin. Okay, so yes, we do have repair work to do, definitely. Um, so let's take a look here and see. Will this come out? It looks like it will. I just need my pokey tool here just to kind of run under here. I just want to lift the foot of this and take out this old spine. Okay, we don't need that. Lifting the glue on the head now. And I think the top of this is much more connected than the bottom. Let me look at this spine for a moment. So I'm not precious about this spine, to be honest. I, I really don't see myself leaving it as is. I think I'll probably cover it. So I'm not too concerned if I do have, um, damage as I'm removing this. Though I don't think I will. I just try to get up whatever I can of this um, this old bit here. But you don't need to obsess over it. It's not a major problem. Okay. And yeah, so that's all very glued. Okay. We just want to get rid of anything that's like not going to stay attached. So now what we're left with here is just this delicate, delicate book. Um, I need to make a new spine liner for it. Um, where did I put the existing one? I think I may have already tossed it in the recycle bin. 
I don't really need it to be honest. Sometimes they're just, they're so dirty and crumbly. I just want to get rid of them. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a bit of a gravelly voice today. I do not know why. <clears throat> I totally feel fine. Okay. So this spine liner will need to be, <coughs> excuse me, um, one and a half inches, I think. Just a little bit less, maybe ever so slightly less. Okay. So I'll put this in my basket here. Um, and so I'll need to get a decent piece of paper for a spine liner. I have one right here. So this is a nice piece of cardstock. And this is what I'll use to just give a nice, like, firm spine to that again. Um, but first, I think I'll want to examine how I'm going to want to do this. I think first on the inside, I will put the cheesecloth to just strengthen everything up. But then I'm also considering if I want to just cut this off the spine entirely, create a new spine, and just use the cover. Because there's nothing like, I could use this for like a fun, you know, like a bookmark or something like that. Um, but it's not a particularly special, like, spine, right? It just says Skeffington's and that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to think on that. <clears throat> and while I do... I will take a look here at the um, the journal together kit. So this is going to be a commonplace book, which means kind of like a miscellaneous, you know, or um, many different, not, not a specific theme, right? Just beautiful ephemera, lovely things, um, a commonplace journal. And those are some of my favorites because I get to just spread my wings with ephemera making. So I'll show you the pages. This is the September 2022 Patreon um, exclusive kit that I've done. Um, I do these one, uh, every month. I release one on the first of the month every month. This is the second month I've been doing this. Um, this particular month um, has been a bit of my own design and procreate as well as scanning just some beautiful antique images from a 1920s scrapbook. Um, yeah. And it's, it's um, provided to all levels, all tiers of my Patreon. And you can check out the link below for that info if you want to. So this is one of my designs here. This is a journal card with a bird and this lovely little wreath. And then we have this little tiny cabinet card of these boys. This is a scan of one of those pages from that old scrapbook. This is one of my designs um, that I designed in Procreate. And then we have some butterflies here. And I felt like they could go maybe with this. So this is an old French place card um, that was in the scrapbook. And it said risque gown. Actually, no, this wasn't in the scrapbook. I'm sorry. This was from an estate sale that I purchased. Um, and so it's... Um, it said risque gown and so it's like you would fold it and make um, a place like a, a dinner place card with it and then there are, you'll see a couple more of these these are antique postcards that I got that were vegetable people this is the potato I love them so much I have my eyes on you and then we have a sea turtle and then we have these two little boys uh, playing trains outside these are 1930s photographs um, that are in this book and then we this says twilight on the lake and then we have a little um, Netherlands stamp um, these are scans from a very old 1800s book that were, it was sort of, um, a lot of like different kind of science illustrations. It reminded me a lot of, um, oh, what is his name? Um, whenever I'm trying to think of something, <laughs> I'm making a video I can't but he makes a lot of different natural history kind of really detailed beautiful imagery and I completely forget his name I am so sorry then we have this kind of ghostly image so this is an original photograph that I've scanned and it's got this kind of dotting that looks very like it's sort of like um you know steaming away from her it's really kind of spooky and kind of interesting we have a little deer head here and this is a scan of an old Hamilton newspaper. 
And it says, Q's and Queens, Miss Harrison and Miss Lennon engage in a billiard battle for the championship of Britain. So this was um, in that old scrapbook. I'm sorry, did I say Hamilton? I've been cutting up Hamilton newspaper this morning from 1936 for a collage that I'm working on. This is not from Hamilton. This is from Britain. <laughs> and it's actually um, considerably older. And um, this is a little frosted peanuts label and then another little floral kind of embroidery label. And then a couple more of those vegetable people um, postcards. So this one says a Merry Halloween. And this one says, I'm as cool as a cucumber, but my heart is warm. Then we have this house. So I got this whole fun like paper um, village of like all these old, they went with paper dolls and they were all these old buildings. And so this is the one that I liked the most. So this is a scan of it. And I'm thinking how fun it would be to just, you know, fussy cut it out and then crease it at the center and have it be a page. And then these are so beautiful. There's, um, I think there's two of these, I can't remember. So this is a piece of stationery that is scanned from um, a mid 1800s family photography, like photo, you know, Victorian style photo book. And you'd put your photo in here. This one is so interesting though. If you see, there's this girl here, then there's this ghostly figure behind her. I love the butterfly up top. And then, this, um, okay, so this is two more of those old um, images from the old natural history book, the bullfrog, tropical birds, and their manner of building their nests. And then these are two old um, snippets from um, probably around 1900, I think 1906, if I recall, um, out of magazines. And they're just kind of like fashion snippets two more of those natural history images. I've made them a little smaller for journal cards. We have, this is a vintage Valentine. This is a cabinet card of this lovely couple. They are from the um, Kitchener Waterloo area, actually Listowell. Um, these are all images from that scrapbook from 1920. Um, these three are actually a little older. They're around 1910 and this one is 1920. And this is, um, this is a scan of an original image that I did a lot of editing on to really make it a little um, more pleasant in color and detail and give it kind of a painterly effect. And it's just these beautiful squirrels. So that's a really fun piece of stationery. You could also make an envelope out of it, or you could use it for any other kind of a way that you would want to use paper. You could cut them out and make pockets, fussy cut them. I just love it as a piece of stationery though. And then I've included one of these pages. So these were the um, the Dietrich life logs um, where this gentleman was recording his purchases. And so this is one of those pages. I do have a full digital in my shop of all of the pages of this, but I'm including one of them in the journal together kit. And then this is just one of my full page designs. It's designed to be a page in a journal. Just some florals and fun background. And there's a little firefly here. And then another of those photography page, stationary pages. This one has a squirrel. And then um, these are both sewing cards. And then these are also journal cards from Italy that are from um, 1892. And they were in um, a very old estate that I purchased and they were these these are scans of the original postcards and they're both sewing images I like the little the little baby sitting down here at, at mama's feet so those are the images for this journal some of them anyways that I will be making ephemera from um, so I will go ahead I think cut these out maybe select a few things to get started on signatures and think about what I how I want to do some work on the cover I'm thinking I might um, attach some lace and possibly make a new spine I haven't decided but I will come back with some details on that real soon with this all cut out Okay, so I have managed to get um, all of the cutting done and I started here. I've decided I will keep the book intact and I've put one half of the um, 
cheesecloth on the spine. I had a scrap piece, but I guess I should have just used a whole piece because this is about the exact size. <laughs> That's okay. Now I'll have another scrap piece. Um, but yeah, I'll just, I'm going to just strengthen up this spine with some cheesecloth. And then I think I know what I want to put on the outside. So while I'm waiting on this, this glue bottle, I need to refill this glue bottle. I should actually do it right now. I'm going to go get my glue. One second. Okay. See, <laughs> I kept saying that I would do this and I just have avoided doing it. Okay, so let's take this tape off. And the ease of which this comes off is great. Now that I have my little hack that I used by putting uh, masking tape around the closure of these bottles so that no glue gets into the, um, the threading of the bottle. Oops. It's really hard to stop these. There we go. Let's just set that there for a moment. And then I need a baby wipe, um, which are up here. So I can clean this all up. Edge of the bottle because you do not want glue in any of these ridges of these sugar bell bottles or you will never get the lid off again <laughs> so then what I do is put the lid back on and I, I, I don't put it on super super tight <laughs> this one I'm actually going to use the glue from this one for this project just to use up that bit of glue Put those out of the way and then I will get my masking tape here okay and then you just go around this so that even if glue comes down the bottle at any time it's not going to be going into the bottle the crease of the bottle there. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and use the sides of this to just wipe some glue on here. There we go. And I'm going to use this bottle because I don't need um, to be like as picky about it just being a little tiny bit. I love this glue. I just don't like waiting for it to get to the bottom of the bottle. And I never have any acetone. I should get some because I think if you dilute it a little bit with acetone, it makes it easier. Okay, so we're just going to kind of Go all over this cheesecloth with a bit of the Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1. Plunk it down to there. <clears throat> Grab this card. Press it in the edges of the spine a little bit. Just kind of smooth it over there. good for strengthening up that spine. This 
set this aside and let it dry. And I found this. I think I want to put a section of it over the the, the outer part of the spine. It's really pretty. I think I'm probably going to like cut it in half. So we shall see. But anyhow, here, let's take a look at where's the this is the book itself, the book block. So let's see what we want to save. So I think I want to save the end, um, these end papers. This is the back. Let's see here. Is that one piece or two? Feels like two, but I think it's only one. Okay, one. What is this glued to? Is that like a fly page? Yes. So we can tear that off. Let me just have some old paper for scrap here. Let's see if I could use this in the signature. I mean, it's quite old. Yeah, I don't think so because it's um it's that glued on fly paper and it will bulk up the signature. But I'll keep it and we'll see if we can use it in the ephemera. And then the same with this front. Um, so I'm gonna get the first signature out here. There we go. This one is yeah, same design. Okay. But hmm, it's kind of cute. This train, this is actually glued on like a fly page too. I was trying to decide if I could save this as a yeah, I can. Perfect. This is the folio that I wanted for my signature. Just the, um, this first page that gives me all of the, the date information of 1897. So that will be in the signature. Now I'll take a quick look through this. I don't think I'll be saving this book. Um, really, I don't think there's much of worth in it. Maybe this map, depending on how, yeah, it's good. I can take that out. This off. Because everything attached is actually glued to this thicker map, which is perfect. So, yeah, we'll use the map. What else do we have in this book? I don't think I want to use any of these kind of like little black and white pictures. I'm not really that interesting. That's a tree. And it has like some diagrams and some other black and white pictures. Mostly just like images of churches. It's a little hard to flip through this book. It just doesn't doesn't want to be flipped through. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that one. I just saw it again. That neat looking diagram. What is this? The face of the old clock. Yeah, maybe we'll keep that. something ephemera-ish with that maybe or like a little glue fussy cut glue down kind of thing as an ode to the book um, okay that's all I think I want from the book I don't need I don't need it I am not keeping like a million books anymore so <laughs> I'm only keeping what I need and I'm not going to use those book pages so all right so 
there we go with a couple of, of, of things to go in the signatures. Let me set aside this. Now I have, um, like I mentioned, I cut out all of the pieces from my kit. So they're all here. So I've chosen a few things that I want to use as pages and then all the rest of it is here. Um, that's all the pages, I think. One, two, three. Yes, okay. I'm gonna set those aside. Now the fun begins in choosing signatures and stuff because this is gonna be a commonplace book. So let's see roughly how many signatures that we're going to want. Let's just eyeball it kind of what I do. Um, is like I'll take a pen essentially before I do my inset but well, I need this to dry first before I get to um, so I'm thinking like one two three yep four and five yeah so I want this to be a five signature book so we'll let that continue to do its drawing over here and we'll plan for five signatures so here are this will be in signature one this can be in signature two, three, four, and five. I really like this house. So I think I wanna make it the center of something. Um, maybe I'll put it here in the center. So how cute that'll be in the center. Then I have a few fly pages from books that I have kept, so this can be page two. I have this little page of pickles. I thought it was really cute. It's also a book fly page. <laughs> kind of made me giggle. Also, it goes with this guy. And then I have this rooster, which is really nice, but unfortunately I think it's too skinny. So yeah, we'll use that for something else. And then I have this but I think because the bird is this way, I don't want to use it the skinny way. So those book pages will go aside to do something else. So I'm going to grab a few more things from my stash and come right back. So I probably want to put about, um, let's say 10 pages per signature. So I'm going to go grab a bunch of papers and we can fold signatures. Okay, so I've just grabbed a bunch of papers some have stuff on them like patterns and such and some don't um, and I think we'll just start building um, our signatures now. So what I typically do is I'll choose a bunch of different kind of interesting papers and then I will stick between them like more plain papers, different kinds though like guest book pages, tea dyed pages, coffee dyed pages. Um, you know, whatever, you'll see <laughs> all sorts of things, you know, ledger and graph paper and whatnot. So this is um, a digital of one of my jelly prints from my shop. And then what I typically will do is I'll take a look like, where do I feel like this would go nice in the signature? I like it with that. I'll cut them down after the fact. So this is really cool. I think um, this is a, an actual jelly print paper. I think that would go nicely with these colors so it will go in here and then we have another circle here um, and I like it with this blue so it'll go in here so we're at three pages for this one this has two 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 and two okay so now I found this which is like a really cool like um, image of um, flowers that you would use to do some embroidery and I'm just going to fold it a little closer to what the size of the book will be and then you have options like you can then fold that in if you want to have it be like a flip out and I think I will with this one it'll be kind of cute to have that as a flip out because you can write there There's that, and that can go in here. It's a little unwieldy before you cut them down. And then I have this big envelope. Um, what I wanna do with this envelope 
is rather than use it as a pocket, I'm actually going to use it as a page. And I'm just going to like, there's an easier way to do this actually, is to just use like a ruler or a knife. And um, just like a little letter opener, jiggy jaggy kind of fun, open that up. And we'll do something fun with that as a page. Using some of my vintage documents that I just got from a um, estate sale a while ago. So that can go in here. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep that map together. We'll see. I don't think it's all that important to be honest. Yes. This is a Society of Industrial Accountants document. And then I found this. I think it's so cute for your special day. Here's something cute with nothing on but a birthday wish. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. And so I know I could put it like, you know, this, but I think what I want to do maybe, um, I need a center signature or actually I could put it in and it could be here in the map like so. And then that would fold down. Should I fold it again? I'll keep that original fold, I think. And then maybe I'll just nip the bottom off. Yeah, I'll just nip the bottom off like where the writing is. So it gets rid of that 1972 birthday wish. But it's still a fun and functional kind of thing. Um, and do I want to do it this way? Or this way? Yeah, I feel like it needs to go this way because it doesn't make sense if you don't have that. So I think I'll use it as like a little pocket. I'll like glue these two ends and that will be like a little pocket, but I need it to stay together in there. So that'd be cute. And then I have this long, long receipt and I kind of had an idea that it would be fun to do something with it. So first we have to tear it in half because it's just simply too long, but we'll put it in one of the signatures. I think we'll use this one. So the original folds. Mm -hmm. And I might need to trim a little off the edges, but that's okay. So that'll go like that. And then this is um, a shabby dabby doodah digital, actually. And I'll trim the white edges off of this afterward. I'm just trying to kind of get my pages all together for now. Okay. And then we have another from the same shabby dabby doodah collection. And then I have some of these wallpapers. I think these are from Victoria Design. That can go in here. This is a nice warmer one. It can go in here. And then we have another envelope. I think I'll use that maybe as ephemera though. Mm-hmm. So I'll just set it aside. Another wallpaper. Any of these that didn't get wallpaper? One, two, three. This one didn't. Kind of want to use these wallpaper pages. Digitals have had them for a little while. That and I'm just in like, let's use it up mode <laughs> because I need to be, I've got too much stuff right now. Too many papers. Okay. And this is like a really cute fall paper. That would look nice in this signature, maybe right here. It's a more plain one. 
And these are shibori papers that have been tea dyed. And I think I would like one in on this. The purple and green would look nice together. And then the green. Let's do that on this one. This purple one. I think that would look nice with this wallpaper because it has some purple in it. Go. Music paper. Another music paper. I will put two in here, but I'll put that one a little further away. Um, this graph paper can go in here. Put this paper here. This big vintage floral page. I'll probably switch these around a few times so don't focus on <laughs> how I have them because they're probably not going to stay in this order. Okay, that one, this one maybe, at the back, this one. Good. And this fun, weird graph paper that's got these sort of horizontal lines. little brown paper, handmade paper, put that in here. Okay, so now I'm down to kind of like the more normal looking kind of papers. So this is tea dye paper and what I'm going to do now is just sort of get an idea of how many pages we're looking at here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that is actually, that's a good signature. I don't even need any more plain pages in it because I have sort of a busy page and then a plain page already accomplished. Also, this is going to be signature one. So this one has one, let's put one in here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we need a few more pages here. So let's go with this yellow. And we'll make that like a tip-in. That can go between these two. This in here. Um, there we go. Then that's good, good, good. We need one more here, so we'll take a tea dyed page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll find something maybe a little later to put in the scent in the middle of these guys because it's like white on white. I'll, I'll do something with that after. Um, but we have enough pages in there for now. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, this can use something else. We'll go eight, maybe. Some color to break up this white on white. One, two, three, and just a tipping. Seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and this little guy. Okay. And the last one. One. Two. Actually, I think I will just tear this one off. It's kind of raggedy on the edge there. One, two, three. that's good now for signatures. Um, as a starting point, probably more will change, but we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> okay, so now the next thing I want to do today, I think, is just take a quick look at what the size of the paper needs to be for this. Okay, so yeah, we're pretty dry now, which is good. Um, let's measure. So this book, um, where the pages would go to, to the edge here, it's almost five and a half, meaning five is the width that I want my papers to be. And then here, I want my papers to be about... Hmm, not quite eight and three quarters. I hate when these numbers are so off. Hmm, so like eight, yeah. Eight and three quarters is as as far as things can go, but I'll try to keep it a little bit under that. So I will just make a little note of that maybe. Um, there's my pen right there and a little scrap of paper. Eight and three quarters. I just put a little minus sign there, meaning just shy of that by five. Okay, so that will give me what I need to know about cutting down my papers. So we can chop some paper now. I um, typically do this like off camera because it's not that exciting to watch but I'll show you a couple. So what did we say? Five, right? So I'm going to take a look here. I'm not really fussed about what's on those pages back there, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not losing anything from this, so I'm fine. Then eight and not quite three quarters. I'm going to go to the line right before three quarters as kind of my guide. This one I know will be fine because it's just a little page, so that's fine. Okay, five. Okay, so these ones, I'm going to first just trim the edges, the white edges off, and then I'll check the size afterward. Okay, so we are at just a little over five. We've got room to trim that, it's okay. And this way is totally fine. It's actually very short. Okay, this, I'm just going to like, try to keep this page and the receipts together. Mm -hmm. Okay, like so. Bring it in to five. Just push those up and straighten them. 
hold it all together. Five. And we're good, we're eight and a half. Okay, and then I will just put them back inside the other paper. Just reassemble the signature so that it doesn't get messed up. And then we have the wallpaper, which we need to trim the edges. And to five. And then our house, hopefully it's already good. Yeah, it is five by. Yep, we're good. Okay, so our little house can go on in here and it's not causing any trouble. So then it goes in the center again. Okay, so there is one nice trimmed up first signature right there. So there we go. So I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of them. And next time I see you, we will start to work on the other aspects of this journal. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I will talk to you again very soon. Bye for now.